Amen. The book of Joshua, the first chapter. We are in the middle of the month, leaning forward towards the end of the year, which is also the beginning of the year. So you can't really celebrate so much the end without celebrating the beginning. Uh, because uh, it's, it's just like life. We, we think of death has been the end, but really it's the beginning. Uh, so it's, it's a continuation uh, into another phase of your existence. Uh, so it's, it's good sometimes, and uh, actually it's good all the time for us to understand uh, the transition that happens in our life. Uh, even in the natural sense, uh, even though we are born babies, we don't stay babies. And go from uh, development from an infant, you know, to a child, to uh, a, a preteen to a teenager uh, to a young adult to a middle-aged adult uh, to a older adult to a senior citizen uh, but then you trans uh, you, you translate from that place if you live that long you translate from that place to eternity so until you get to eternity uh, there's going to be changes in your life uh, there's going to be changes, and you have to be able to adjust and know how to modify yourself with the changes. I realize that as I grow older, the things that I used to be able to do as a young man, I can't do it anymore. And I would be foolish to get up here and try to act or try to look like I did when, uh, uh, when I was like 30 years ago, thir uh, 20 years old. Uh, 25 years old, amen, and I think that's maybe part of the problem why our society is mixed up now. We've got too many old people trying to look like they're young folk and trying to act like they're still young, but uh, God help me. Let's look at somebody and just tell them to act your age. <laughs> and that's all you're required to do, just, 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 just be your age. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Amen. But, but, but I believe that uh, God gives us wisdom and he gives us understanding of our next phase in life. Amen. And uh, God has put this word in my heart uh, that I believe will be an encouragement for you uh, on this afternoon. Uh, so if you will, just give me just a few moments and I, I give you what thus saith the Lord and uh, we'll go from there. That's all right. From Joshua, the first chapter, beginning at verse 1, and uh, we've heard a whole lot of messages preached from this, and I've preached a couple uh, from this myself, but uh, let me just give you something a little bit different on the day. Joshua, the first chapter, beginning at verse 1, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister saying now, now, now that kind of uh, got my attention because it says after the death of Moses now when you understand and you can back up to the 31st chapter of the book of Deuteronomy it talks about how God uh, led Moses onto Mount Nebo and uh, on Mount Nebo and he went to the, the, the uh, 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 hilltop called Pishkah and there God showed him the promised land and he showed him all the regions uh, of what would consist of Israel. And the Lord let him see just the abundance and the blessings of that. But uh, Joshua, uh, I have to understand, Joshua was the one that was to carry them into the promise. And the Lord told Moses, uh, you brought them to the promise, but I'm going to let your servant carry them to the promise. You have to understand. But so what? Moses was not able to enter into the promised land. But, but what got me is that as the uh, scripture says here in the first verse, it says, after the death of Moses. Now, uh, there was a transition. Moses was 120 years old. He had all his strength. He had his good eyesight. He was just like a young man. God had worked a miracle in the physical man of Moses that he had the strength even yet of a young man. But yet... He died. In other words, God said, now this is the end of your life. But it did not say that God killed him. Understand? It didn't say God murdered him. It didn't say that he committed suicide, but it said that he died. 
Y'all got me? He died on Mount Nebo, and God buried him on Mount Nebo somewhere, or either in the valley. But the question is, nobody saw what happened. Only thing we know that the report came that Moses died. Y'all got me? Now, now, this caught my attention because Moses was known to go to the mountain and stay there for a long time. Y'all understand? He went there one time and stayed 40 days. He went there for 40 days, and, and the people thought that something had happened to him, that he wasn't coming back. Uh, you have to understand that they built the golden calf, and Moses, uh, along with Joshua, heard what happened, came down and uh, did what he did, went back up on the mountain. So Moses was known to draw away from the people and get into the presence of God, but this time he didn't come back, but it yet was recorded that Moses was dead. You have to understand, and it was recorded so that even yet in the 31st chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, it said that children of Israel went 30 days mourning the death of Moses. So apparently God had to tell somebody what happened. And it was actually your servant uh, Joshua, that God now began to speak to Joshua. This let me know that even though Joshua was set to be the next leader, God did not begin to speak to Joshua as a leader until after he was finished with Moses as a leader. I understand? So really there's like one that God holds accountable, even though there are others that work under him. You have to be careful because when you get so much of a word that is greater than your leader, then you fall into the category of Korah. Because Korah revolted against Moses and said, well, we hear God just like you. Well, God said, I'm going to prove to you the one that I honor. And he opened up the earth and swallowed Korah and those that was with him. Y'all got me? So here we see a transition that now is moving from Moses to, from the leadership of Moses to that of Joshua. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. I want you to understand, even though your last position may have died to you, don't mourn over it too long. But he said, get up now. You have to understand, it got to be a point that you move. Don't stay in your past. God help me, Holy Ghost. Don't stay in those things that you just got out of. But he said, get up. He told him what? He said, now, therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of, of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the river, all, in, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And I love that there's two ways you can read that. In other words, there should never be a man that will stand before you all the days of your life. Then you can look at it as there in your promise. You understand? That's your there. In your promise, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Why would God allow you to get into a place to allow somebody to evict you out? So he says, in your promise... No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Then he says, what? Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people thou uh, shall divide uh, for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Then he reinforced it. He says, only be thou what? Strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. 
which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Some of y'all waiting on God to prosper you. But he said, you shall what? Make your way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. I want to stop there in uh, verse 9. And I want to leave with you this thought, strength and courage. Amen. That's why I want to talk with you for your next few moments. Strength and courage. Would you look at someone and just encourage them to be strong and very courageous. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. Strength and courage. Obedience of God, obedience to God, that is, uh, does not only just require faith, but your faith must be filled with strength confidence and courage. God help me Holy Ghost. You see, the easiest thing to do in life is to do nothing. Yeah, I understand. To do nothing, to remain idle, to don't even move, just to sit there. But faith does not allow an individual to maintain stagnancy. It won't let you stay there doing nothing. Because faith always stimulates action and stimulate works. For even James says, for faith without works is dead, being alone. As a matter of fact, to resist change and uh, to resist the movement of God is actually an, an exhibition of a lack of faith. So whenever you refuse to move or you refuse to change, you're pretty much saying that you have no faith. You're not going to move. But faith does not uh, allow you just to sit there because faith is going to cause you to move. In other words, to remain in a tradition or to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again does not require faith. Now, this is going to mess with some of y'all, and I don't mind. Never challenging your life, never trying to grow, or never trying to improve, as a matter of fact, is an insult to faith and the insult to God. God, your mercy, because faith always causes change. Y'all got me? Look at someone and say, faith causes change. change. Uh-huh, yes. Our advancement is life is, is really what gives glory to God. We must constantly press towards uh, what I call perfection. For faith always produces forward movement. Faith don't keep you in your past. It always, what, carry you forward. Even after all that Paul knew about the law and all that Paul knew about prophecy and even after the abundance of revelation that he got from God, he refused to rest in his own spiritual position, but he sought to know Christ even greater. He says in Philippians, the third chapter, beginning in verse 12, he says, not as though I'd already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I'm apprehended of Christ. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. If you look at it, you would think of anybody apprehended, it was Paul. But he says, I counted not myself to what? Have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and what? Reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press. God, help me, Holy Ghost. I press, but he said, I'm not pressing down, I'm pressing forward. God, get mercy. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Your presence should not be on your seat. <laughs> your presence should not be on your bed or do nothing. 
but your pressing should be forward. In other words, he says, I press toward. God, help me, Holy Ghost. And to press toward something means you have to lean from something. In other words, I got to leave something behind me in order to, what, press toward something that is before me. Once a person thinks that he or she has arrived or have made it, he or she now begins to fail to improve upon themselves. And when they fail to improve upon themselves, stagnancy steps in. And then forward progress ceases and growth diminishes. Then after this, revelation and encounters with God decreases and eventually backward momentum sets in. God, give us a backward momentum. Let me explain to you what I mean by backwards momentum. Backwards momentum is when you try to revert the tactics of the past to produce your desired effects, not realizing that the results did not come from just those tactics, but it actually came from obedience to God, more than just those traditional actions. In other words, you can do what you did on day one, and now it won't have the significance because the, the obedience to you to God in day one is what produced effects. Because many of you know that when you started out, you made a lot of mistakes. When you started out, even what you did was not really the best that you can do in what you did. But yet what God blessed it. Because what? You moved by faith. So what God really honored your faith more than what you did. But when you are moving in backwards momentum, you keep trying to produce the same thing, hoping for the same results, and then you get disgusted and you wonder where God. God is where faith is. Oh, y'all got me. And faith is always moving forward. Look at somebody say, faith is moving forward. God, help me, Holy Ghost. So just as God instructed and charge Joshua, I instruct and charge each of you today to be strong and of good courage. Matter of fact, your next great move in God is going to require you to be strong and what? Of good courage. God, help me. I hope you're ready for your next move. I know some of y'all talking about I'm going to the next level. I'm going to the next dimension. I'm going higher in God. I'm moving closer to God. But to move closer is going to require courage and what? Strength. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Courage, hear me now. Courage is the state or quality of mind and, or spirit that enables one to face danger, fear, or vicissitudes with self uh, possession, confidence, and resolution. In other words, courage means to be brave. Even though you're facing danger, you don't back down. Even though it may look difficult, it may look impossible, you may have all kind of odds thrown against you, you still remain consistent and faithful in your movement. Now, it don't mean that you have to measure your movement and your movement today had to be as fast as what it was yesterday. It means that you're just moving. You have to understand, yesterday I may have gone a mile. Today I may have made only an inch. But the difference is, is that I'm an inch further than what I would have been if I hadn't done the thing. So what faith causes me to move. And it takes courage now for me to go, even though I may not seem as though I'm doing the best that I can, I am moving. God help me, Holy Ghost. The need for courage implies that resistance comes as you encounter your next step in God. If you never progress, you are never a threat to Satan. God help me, see. God let me, let me deal with this. You see, resistance Resistance is evidence that Satan and his dark kingdom are really fearful of you. God, your mercy. Just, just, just think about it. Just think about this. You are very powerful. You have more power in you than what you even can imagine. God, your mercy. And, and the enemy say, if I can resist you, I can't get your power, but maybe I can get you to forsake your power. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Just think how powerful you are that the devil and his entire kingdom 
is threatened by you. Not just the devil, not just a demon, but the devil and his what? Entire kingdom is threatened by you. So what? They set out to resist you. If you were not powerful, then he would only use one demon. God, I either he'll use just the spirit of fear. But he knows that he has to remove all stops just to try to hinder you. He can't stop you. He's just trying to hinder you. So what? Resistance now proves and it is evidence that I am making forward progress. But faith produces more than what you see. And it has courage that allow you to have an unwavered faith in the midst of resistance and adversity. In other words, even when they pull out all their arsenal, all, in, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost speak to your mind from the book of Isaiah. No weapon that is formed against you. God help me, Holy Ghost, shall prosper. Well, that means even if they have all their arsenal, all of it cannot prosper. Well, suppose they deny me this. Well, it won't prosper. Well, suppose they tell me no, it won't prosper. Suppose they put a stumbling block in front of me, it won't prosper. Suppose they try to put, scandalize my name and, 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 and do all other evil against me. Look at somebody say, but it won't prosper. And I'm determined that I'm gonna keep on going because if I listen to the lies of Satan, then I'll do nothing. But I'm here to let you know today to take courage and to be strong because great is your reward as you press. God your mercy. You see, faith make you keep on going. And faith requires you to have courage. God have mercy. Matter of fact, look at this strength now. Strength is the state, the property, or the quality of being strong. In other words, strength is a property that is on the inside of you. God, you got me? Strength is a property that is on the inside of you, which has an implication that you have power that is dormant or resting in you. Oh, we call it potential energy. You have a potential power in you that is greater than what you can imagine. Oh, God, your mercy, I wish y'all could get this. And this is the power that is given to a believer after they are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Just as Jesus promised in Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Our strength and our, encourage, and our courage, especially as applied to our faith, actually comes from the power of the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside of us. So now my strength is measured by my power. You got me? Your strength is measured by your power. And if you have the power of God in you, guess what your strength is? So therefore, Paul says, I can do all things. I'm not limited to a few things. God, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I want you to understand that prayer, praise, worship, and even studying the word of God, it strengthens our power, but the source of that power really comes from the Holy Ghost. God, your mercy, it's not, not like Samson, it's not in our hair. Oh, God, your mercy, but it's in our spirit. God, help me, Holy Ghost. It's not in our clothes, but it's in our spirit. It's God on the inside of us. In other words, there's more power in you than in any nuclear weapon that the world can ever form. There's more power in you that'll change this whole world. Only thing you have to do is tap into your power. And if you have that power, you have the strength to make it through any adversity. So therefore today we challenge you to be strong and very courageous. God, have mercy. Oh, yes, we tell, we, we tell you today uh, to use the best of you to do the best for God. Look at somebody say, I got best in me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I wish you could, I would look at three people and tell them I got best in me. Yes, yes, yes. 
Oh, God, help us. There, there, there is best in you. And God say, use your courage to stir up the best in you, to give the best to God. Oh, God, your mercy. I want you to understand, there will never be any true exhibitions of faith without strength and courage. Because faith brings into your presence something that is not presently existing. You don't need faith for what you already have. You need faith to get what you don't have. You need faith to go where you're not. You understand? You need faith to get and to bring change in your life. You don't need faith for what you already have. You don't need faith to walk. Your feet do that for you. God, your mercy. But to jump through, a, run through a truth, to leap over a wall that you may not have the present ability to. You see, faith will make you do it. But the enemy know if I can make you afraid that maybe you'll trip, maybe you'll stumble, maybe you won't make it, then the first thing you resign to do, well, I'm not going to try. Well, he's already defeated you because you denied the power that is already on the inside of you. But I want you to understand, when you tap into your power, nothing becomes impossible for you. I want you to understand that faith causes now for you, it causes you to move in a manner that is not commonly displayed in a particular area. In other words, faith may make you do something that is, uh, may seem to be a little crazy, that don't follow the traditional way of things. But faith will produce results. Matter of fact, the Bible said that God has chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the things that are weak, the things uh, that, are, that, that are not boisterous, what, to produce results. In other words, God say it's faith that makes the difference. He said, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. It's the faith in the spirit of a person that produce results. Moses' charge, hear me, Moses' charge was to free the people, then lead the people across the Red Sea. His charge was to facilitate their transition in the wilderness and to prepare them for their promise. Joshua's charge was to take the people across the Jordan River into the promise and not just to carry them there, but to empower them to possess the land. They had to possess the land, which required them to sanctify the land and to establish the kingdom principles in the land. They couldn't just go and take the land, but they had to cast the enemy out the land. They had to change the worship that was in the land. They had to change what? The attitude of the people in the land because that was their promise. Moses couldn't do that with the people, but Joshua could. In other words, each understood their calling. But one thing that Joshua had, he had to assure that as I was with Moses, he said, so shall I be with you. Now, when you go in the book of Deuteronomy, it said that Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid hands on Joshua. God, help me hold it. Go, so what? The power of Moses was resting now in Joshua. Now, not just the power of Moses in Joshua, but the power of God in Joshua. Because Joshua operated with everything that Moses had, plus what God gave Joshua. So y'all should be rejoicing. Because you just don't have what your leader has. But you got another dimension that God has put into you. That's why Jesus said, I got to go back to my father. He said, because the works that I do shall you do. And what? Greater works than these shall you do. Because I go back to the daddy. If your leader ever ascends. God, help me, Holy Ghost, somebody caught that. If your leader ever ascend, then there's greater that is in you. Oh, God, have mercy. Look at him, look at him and just tell me to go up, Pastor. Oh, because every time I go up, there's greater that come down to you. When Elijah went up, there was greater that came down for Elijah. Oh, God, have mercy. You should understand every time your leader get elevated, you should be elevated too. Ah, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Every time your leader gets stronger, you should get stronger. Every time your leader get more power, you should get more power. 
You have to understand, but it takes courage. Look at somebody say, take courage. It takes courage to bring change into any area that is foreign to kingdom standards. I want to put the world on notice that change is about to come. And you might not be used to what's getting ready to happen. But I take courage because change is getting ready to happen. Courage does not tolerate compromise. Because compromise leads to the erosion of progress. Courage does not, comp lead, courage does not uh, accept compromise. Because compromise means I gave up. I don't believe in my own ability. Courage don't have to partner with the enemy. It doesn't have to partner with the weak. But courage works with the strength that is on the inside of you. Oh, God, your mercy. Look at this, say courage. And lastly, our courage and our strength is fueled by our ability to stay focused on the word of God. Lord, have mercy. The more you focus on the word, the more strength you'll get. God told Joshua in Joshua, the first chapter, I'm almost finished. He says in verse 7, he says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou may have observed to do. Look at somebody say, observe to do. He said, be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. In other words, you won't be able to observe to do if you're not strong and if you're not courageous. Y'all got me? He said, what? So be very, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may have observed to do according to all uh, in the law. He says, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. He said, what? Turn not to the right hand or to the left. In other words, learn how to stay focused. He said, because in your focus, he said, thou may what? Prosper whithersoever thou goest. So the more I'm focused on God, the greater my accomplishments will be. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I remember when I was in school and right after I got and say, God, have mercy, I was so focused on the word of God. And I said, but God, I got to get out of school. I still got to do my lesson. But the God said, don't lose focus on me, but put your textbook right here. Put your Bible right here. I read a little bit out my textbooks, studied my notes, read my word, read my word, looked at my notes, read my word, studied my syllabus, read my word, looked at the book. But what was consistent, I stayed in the word. And when I graduated, I graduated with honors. You see, because I stayed focused on God, I had what? Good success. Lord, have mercy. He said, you'll prosper whatever thou do. If he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Look at somebody say, you can't just read it, but you got to talk it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, he said, it shall not depart, what? Not out of your mind, but out of what? Your mouth. The problem is some of y'all talking too much of the wrong stuff. And you're saying not what God has said. But the word confession actually means to say the same thing. So spiritual confession is to say the same word that God is saying. God don't say that you broke. He said what? Well, you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. He don't say you can't make it. He said I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. He said that you are healed and not sick. God, have mercy. Look at somebody say, say the same thing. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm not a sinner. I am holy. I am powerful. Matter of fact, I'm awesome. So he said, what? This book, this book shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou, and I love this, thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou may observe, there go again, that thou may what? Observe to do. That thou may have observed to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. I'm so glad that he prefers success with good. 
because you could be successful at doing wrong. But he said what? Good success. That means the success that I appreciate from this is the success that I would enjoy. You see, a person can kill themselves, they're successful. They completed what it was they were set not to do. They set out to kill themselves, so what? They were successful when they died. But that ain't good success. <laughs> but when I, when I set out, God, here, I want you to see it. If I set my mind to buy a million dollar mansion, when I possess that mansion, I have succeeded. So you have to understand, success is always progressive. So what? I'm not looking for a final success right now, even though that's part of my goal. Because there's a lot of other many successes that I got to get along the way. You have to understand, I got many souls that got to be saved. That is success. Every time a person get built up, I'm successful. Every time a person get anointed, what? I'm successful. Every time a person becomes successful, what? I'm successful. Because what? I have empowered them to do what they could not think that they could even able to do. God help mercy. Oh, God help me, Holy Ghost. I'm just about finished here. God help mercy. Uh, the word observe, observe that's used in this passage, means to conform one's action or their practice to, to comply with. That means that whereby we are given to observe the word of God, the means that is that we are given to observe the word of God is through what? Meditation. He says what? Both day and night. Can y'all hear me? Meditation when both day and night. In other words, the word of God becomes an active part of our daily living both day and night. Not just on Sundays. Not just doing Bible study. But it says what? Day and night. There's no time between day and night. When day ceases, night begins. When night ends, get day begins. So there's no difference. It's either day and night. So what? It's day and night that you got to what? Meditate on the word of God. You'll never do the word of God with my, without meditating on the word of God. The word meditate actually means to engage in contemplation or reflection. Oh, can I ask you a question? What's been on your mind? What do you consciously think about? And I know the enemy brings thoughts to your mind, but what do you let stay on your mind? God, your brush. You have to understand. It, it, it means to focus one thoughts on, to reflect on, or to ponder over, to engage in a mental exercise. Additionally, the Hebrew word translated as meditate in this passage implies to utter or to mutter, that is, to speak or growling, or the word moan, M-O-A-N, not M-O-U-R-N. Understand, M-O-U-R-N is to grieve over the loss. But to moan means to talk under your breath. You get, y'all got me? So now in that he said meditate, he said make sure your mind stay on the word and you begin to speak the word which implies that we should be speaking the word of God that we're contemplating on. So in other words, when I read the word every now and then, I have to read it out loud. Yeah. Then when I meditate on it, I repeat that what I have read. God, your brother said, oh God, sometime I just tell myself, you know, God help me, Holy Ghost, I will bless the Lord at all times. You understand? That's what David was doing. He was meditating. I will bless the Lord what? at all times. And his praise shall what? continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then he says what? Join in together. He said, oh magnify the Lord with me. So let us exalt his name together. Meditation would invite others to experience the presence of God like what you're experiencing. He said, and when you do it, I'll give you good success. Can I prove it? Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the other things shall be what? Added, added, meaning that he's going to what? Attach it to you. It don't mean that you got to go and multiply. He said, because I'm going to add what you can't multiply. 
if you just seek after me and if you just repeat my word. So I want to encourage you today. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Prepare your mind. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm letting y'all know what's coming. God, we're moving, we're moving. He said, prepare your mind and prepare your heart for righteous invasion of spiritual power and truth as we progressively move into the promise of the Lord. In other words, with strength and courage, our faith will carry us to height beyond our imagination. God mercy. Yes, yes. With what? Strength and courage. There's nothing I can't believe God for. Oh, God, help y'all understand? Because I believe God. You have to understand, we got to get the faith. And I know people were critical of Peter getting out the boat. But that's to courage. Courage to walk on something that would defy you. Nature teach you that water ain't going to hold you up. Not for you to walk on it. But it took courage for him to step out the boat. So what? When he got the word of God, he gave him courage. Meditating on God's word to give you courage. Now that you have courage, you can act on faith. The problem is some of us try to have faith while we still fearful. But faith never works with fear. But you need perfect love to cast fear out. Your God, help me, Holy Ghost. And when you get the word of God, and when you get the power of God working on the inside of you, you can believe God for anything. Mm. So now I have the strength, which means I just have to tap into my power. Got to bridge it. Now that I know that all I have to do is tap into my power, I got courage. Because I got power there waiting on me to tap into it so I can move by faith. So what he told Joshua, he said, don't, you just don't go by yourself, but carry all the people. Take my word, it takes faith to move a bunch of folk. Yes, it, does. Yes. it took faith for us to get to where we are now. Yes. But what, we had to move the people, which means I had to encourage your faith. Other than that, after 20 years, we won't own 20 land, 20 acres. After 20 years, we won't own a church and a daycare if we didn't use faith and courage. In other words, faith now tell me I just got to trust God. It don't look like things are working like we want to, but it don't matter. I'm moving forward. Y'all got me. I'm moving forward. It don't look like the way it's gonna be plain. It don't look like it's gonna be straight. It don't look like, it, it, I can't even see what's gonna happen tomorrow, but it don't stop me from entering into tomorrow. Because if God gives me the morrow, if he gives me the next day, he's already prepared for me before the day get here. If you understand that, before you even, matter of fact, before you even get home, don't you know God has already given you a clear path, safe from accidents, hurt, harm, and you'll see cars hitting each other all around you? Why? Because God has designed for you to get there. He has already designed your future before you get to it. Did he give you a glimpse of it and you call it vision? Because if you don't have any vision, you won't go toward it. So what? Vision now becomes a fuel for your faith. So vision encouraged me saying, come on, Gerald. You have to understand. What you see around you is not what I'm showing you. So don't stop with where you are. Because this don't look like what you showed me. Y'all got me? Some of y'all stopped in foreign land. And it don't look nothing like your promise. You know what I understand? I, I, I know that I'm going to have enough money to be a blessing. Because my prayer, you know what it says in Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, what running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. My prayer is not for to be given unto my bosom, but I want to be the man that were given to your bosom. You have to understand, I have to have enough to give up to a whole lot of folk. Y'all get it. So if I'm not there now, why would I stay here? But I'm, my faith is going to keep me going until I get there. 
God help me. Let, let, let me leave this with this one verse of scripture and I'm finished. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, uh, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what? The power that worketh within us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. Don't allow anything to disrupt your progress. Be strong and very courageous. I understand. Be strong. If you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you got every reason to be strong and to exhibit the strength of God that is on the inside. And I know obstacle comes, discouragement comes. The enemy bring them. That's his job. But his job cannot hinder my job. Only thing he is is just a thorn in the flesh. A thorn don't kill anybody. I haven't heard of anybody die from a thorn. Now I'm a healthcare professional. No one that I know of died from a thorn. It aggravates you enough, just pluck it out. God said, I gave you enough grace. My grace is sufficient. Why are you crying over something that you can handle yourself? You understand? And that's what it is. A lot of us, we're crying over stuff that God's already given us the grace to handle. Y'all got me? Come on, y'all stand, please. Strength and courage.